respected dr mohan prasad he is mainly responsible for starting this talk show he is out of station he is in chennai then dr mitra prasad his daughter consultant hepatologist bgm hospital reported hospital in goimbatore dr vamsi murthy consultant gastroenterologist bgm hospital goimbatore and uh, dr meikandan neurologist in madurai and dr geeda retired principal dr kalai chelvi principal government arts college goimbatore dr meera raghavan urogena college chennai and my dear friends who have joined online today the topic for the talk show is how to live healthy if you want to be wealthy you have to be healthy so there are two people here who are going to make you very healthy if you are not if you are already healthy they will make you more healthy it's a very interesting topic and uh, first of all let me welcome and introduce dr mitra prasad daughter of uh, dr mohan prasad the second daughter of mohan mohan prasad she is a consultant hepatologist in the vgm hospital a multi speciality hospital especially gastroenterology and uh, she has got an mbbs from coimbatore medical college md in internal medicine from the same college and dm hepatology from mms mmc that is madras medical college and she is also specialized and got distinction in uh, medicine and ophthalmology a wonderful in gastroenterology and ophthalmology and she is a member of indian society of gastroenterology indian national association for study of liver american society for gastro intestinal endoscopy tamil nadu medical council and then uh, she is uh, invited faculty for indian society for gastroenterology tamil nadu chapter 2020 current and future therapeutic regimens of nish asian medical students association india reticulin framework of hepatitis then uh, kuppam medical college meet alcoholic liver disease then gastro update 2019 prevention of progress of fibrosis in chronic liver disease vgm hospital meet chronic liver disease and she has all quite quite a few research articles uh, along with dr kumar nadrajan my friend and uh, former professor and hod of medicine coimbatore medical college and dr k narana swami the present superintendent whom i know through dr edwin jo former dean of uh, uh, coimbatore medical college is a very known hepatologist and uh, he has got a wonderful and outstanding biodata and uh, mitram mitra hem her name is mitra prasad mitram means tamil la natpu a friendship he treat very friendly treatment if you patient is very friendly and uh, if you have got any problem the patient the van the problem will vanish that is mitram her father is, her father is also like that she treats person like a psychiatrist so if you go there with a problem she immediately uh, by sweet words by hearing his sweet words Uh, most of the problems will disappear that is mitra prasad she is going to give the talk show first then i am going to introduce dr uh, vamsi murthy her husband and uh, son in law of dr mohan prasad he is an mba mbbs md dm gastro and fa gie consultant gastroenterology therapeutic endoscopist a wonderful combination expert in advanced endoscopy procedures expert in advanced endoscopy MBBS from Andhra Pradesh, MD General Medicine from JSS University of Mysore, DM Gastroenterology Tamil Nadu, Fellowship in Third Space Endoscopy, Endoscopic Ultrasound, Dean Anand Mangeshkar Hospital, Pune was awarded the Fellowship in Advanced Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, that is FAGIE, performed high-end Third Space Endoscopy procedures at Singapore, has numerous publications in national and international journals. has also authored cook authored book chapters in the field of gastroenterology 
and he is a linguist speaks tamil hindi telugu kannada and english and what not in a silver lining he is the son of the renowned physician from andhra pradesh dr k ramamurthy and he is also the son in law of the renowned and outstanding uh, gastroenterologist of coimbatore dr mohan prasad these people are going to talk on the subject is very interesting topic how to live healthy so we want to be if you want to be wealthy money is required for everything if you want to be wealthy you have to be very healthy if you are not healthy they will make you healthy and uh, if you are half healthy they will make you fully healthy and like that and uh, some uh, important personalities are joined today's program dr meikandan my good friend in madurai he is the son in law of the great tamil savant uh, professor avvai durasamy pillai and brother of dr avvai nadarajan friend of dr mohan prasad ex vice chancellor of tamil university and uh, he retired as a professor and a chod of neurology madurai medical college he has already joined then professor geeda retired principal dr kalai chelvi retired present principal of coimbatore government arts college and uh, some of uh, dr meera raghavan all those people i extend my hearty welcome i wish the function all success now i am not uh, prolong my talk my duty is to only welcome the gathering so only welcoming note first of all i ask dr mitra prasad to continue the proceedings thank you all for giving me a patient here uh, so first of all uh, thank you very much for that uh, lovely uh, introduction you gave us i and really i think having people like you to guide us we uh, uh, was the reason that we took all those steps there and thank you very much and uh, today the topic is going to be how to live healthy it's in line with the uh, world health day which just happened in april 7 so i hope this is going to be a very humorous and a very light uh, session and uh, hope you have a very entertaining sunday and you still uh, are we are all inspired to be healthy making this talk inspired um, a lot of newer things in me itself that i have uh, pledged on right now so yes uh, to start off so to start off what is health so uh, i get a lot of patients who come in and say this is the first time i've been to the hospital and i'm 60 years old uh, so i'm i've been perfectly healthy to date so then i would like to ask them why they are coming at 60 years old with a chronic disease that has been persisting for 30 years were they healthy those past 30 years well they did they are seemingly healthy because your body takes care of yourself till it totally runs out of the fuel that it needs so till then you are seemingly healthy but what is perfect health so who definition is a state of physical social and mental well being so are you physically socially mentally well at this end at the end of this talk i hope you do have a few more perspectives uh, to you, uh, you and you will uh, probably um, think more in terms of what your journey till now so looking at the health triangle so mental social physical health are all all go hand in hand and they one uh, one aspect can really influence the other so physically uh, if you are well then your mental uh, attitude is all towards positivity and as a positive individual you attract positive people towards you so the whole cycle is one of positivity but if mentally you are depressed you are not happy with your work you are stressed you have too much of work and too less time and you do not know how to relax so what do you do physically you don't eat well you don't eat on time you either overeat when you eat uh, maybe off time or you drink you smoke so then how will your social circle be you will be attracting all negative kind of people and this before you realize it becomes a vicious cycle and by the end of the end of a couple of years you realize the person who was there earlier years before is somebody completely different than the person who you are now so it's important that this 
triangle is fully maintained as a positive triangle and that's absolutely in your hands and that's absolutely in whatever you do day to day it does not involve long term goals it's very short term goals minute to minute second to second goals that you need to have so covid 19 was um, a kind of um, a drama of all sorts and by the end of covid 19 a lot of people were like this so covid 19 is out the government rules are saying we can go out but how do we we don't even fit out of the door i think we all grew two to three sizes uh, uh, our clothes sizes only picked up two to three sizes more so that the reason for that was this person on the right obesity doesn't run in the family the main problem is that nobody runs in the family so are you perfectly healthy will you do a check today will you go to the mirror see if you are looking like this no man do you smoke a pipe do you have obesity and do you have to or uh, do you take a long time to actually reach the mirror when you're thinking you really want to walk fast so if so lose some weight with smoking move around more and eat a carrot <coughs> think back <clears throat> look at your lifestyle does it involve all what is in this heart do you when was the last time you cycled when was the last time you took your kids or your grandkids to out to play ball when was the last time you lifted a weight or a shuttle racket what are we doing so look at this girl so you can this clearly explains itself eating on time having a healthy lifestyle relaxing versus how it is when you are full filled with devices or alcohol <coughs> so let us look at it take water yes sir let us look at the aspect of physical health so what is physical health it has three pillars you have physical activity sleep and nutrition in it so nutrition and diet trust me we are in a country which has been following the best diet for years together and but are we balancing it all yeah are we doing a balance of a diet do we have a balanced diet no balanced diet is not what this person is doing yes stocking up a lot of junk food and to balance it more junk food on the other side that is not balanced diet so you take your plate every day is your plate for, filled 40% with green leafy vegetables and uh, 25% with grains and another 25% with good protein do a check each time you look at a plate the body is not a junkyard you put in fat food fast foods you will become fat you put in green leafy vegetables then is how <coughs> your health will be maintained <coughs> so you have to avoid basically trigger foods what are trigger foods trigger foods are those when if taken in small quantities really make you want to eat more you eat a bite of the burger and you're like no i really want more and you eat a slice of the pizza and you think okay i'm going to eat only three more slices so that's trigger food so that is what we want you to avoid or have in lesser quantities <coughs> why because look at this a big mac burger they are advertising proudly that the calories have gone lesser but still it it carries around 550 calories and uh, look even a crunch bagel carries around 420 calories 760 calories for a burrito this is fast food this is the western diet that we are all craving towards right now and okay so 550 calories a meal when you actually have to have around 1200 to 1400 calories per day 550 is okay maybe i'll fast the other the other few meals or take very less but then what would you need to wash down that one big burger yes you need a coke so the coke itself has 300 calories and 300 ml do you know you have to run like you have to imagine a dog chasing you and run this fast for 20 minutes if you really have to burn just 300 kilo calories i don't think i want to do that every day every meal i don't think we have the time also so don't live the life of pie p i e live a life of pie calculate everything you eat don't make it the pizza pie so and <coughs> look at this <coughs> you can't have three slices 
of bigger quantity and uh, instead of having six slices of smaller quantity it all amounts to the same uh, calories so 1200 calories in one whole pizza so that equals one quarter of a meal uh, one quarter of the day meal that you're having how can you burn it you can only burn it if you put it in the oven how will your body be able to burn it so all this will cause a well-rounded diet which is why we say Take it in lesser quantities, maybe once a week or even less than once a week in a very lesser quantity. And then your body can compensate to be in its perfectly normal healthy state, even though you've had it. So you are perfectly what you eat. So we really do not want that Golgopa wala asking you, please, ma'am, finish that Golgopa and then I will give you the next one when you're thinking, no, I really don't have anything in my mouth now. So let's not overeat so you are what you eat so would you like to look like this particular person yes very well so then eat what you have to eat eat the rainbow so all colored foods all colored foods. if you're going to a supermarket go look at the array look at all the colors look at all the colors of the rainbow <coughs> all of them are rich in <coughs> antioxidants i'm so sorry all of them are really high in antioxidants. So the bananas, the mushrooms, the pineapples, the mangoes, oranges, papayas, apples, strawberries, tomatoes, guavas, avocados, cucumber, all of them have real high antioxidant value that can actually take care of all the inflammation that is going on in you. So eat the rainbow, reduce inflammation. And I'm only eating carbs, is that okay? But then there are good carbs and bad carbs. Good carbs are your whole carbohydrates and refined carbs are your bad carbs. So do avoid the candy, sodas, pastries and sugary cereals and white bread. What can I eat? Our diet is supposed to be the tastiest diet in the whole world. And yes, we do have low calorie, low fat alternatives to everything. You, your breakfast can be your classic Iggy Samba, which is rated as the best diet in the whole world. It could be any of these. <coughs> <clears throat> which taken even in sufficient quantities will fill your stomach but will provide lesser calories giving you the, uh, the energy that you need and not overfeeding you so this low calorie low fat alternative you can look at so uh, is meat going to be only my my only source of protein if so is uh, is how how do i go by getting only lean meat so no your vegan source of protein is also there so go buy all this, go buy paneer, go buy oats, go buy soy, lentils or black gram, add more of this in your diet. Just give it a variety and look at the way your perception towards all high fat diet changes. And yes, go for a healthy source of fat, avocado, salmon, egg yolk in moderation and sardines, nuts and sunflower seeds. All of this could give you the omega-3 that you need and not giving you the bad fats. So ultimately, the best diet uh, said in the medical uh, terminology is our Medi Mediterranean diet. So this diet comes as a pyramid and the lower part of the triangle shows all the <coughs> foods that is to be taken on <coughs> a regular basis, everyday basis. And the upper part shows all the food that is to be eaten in a lesser basis, maybe less often than once a week. So drink a lot of water, follow this di dietary pyramid, incorporate it with your own diet and do a lot of physical activity and you're good. So do I have to go to something like a keto diet? Not very advisable because you're eating a lot of protein and fat and whether your body can handle it or not, I'm sure experts can tell. You can try it, but not the most um, advisable diet when you have something like a Mediterranean diet in uh, work. So yeah, do keep a measure of your weight every day. Measure it. Count the kilos. Count the uh, grams that are going up or down and <coughs> you will find a very good result. So this new concept of intermittent fasting has come up. So what is intermittent fasting? It involves two days. An alternate day uh, fasting only an intermittent time. It's not. Uh, it doesn't uh, involve a very strict fast. So one day is a completely well-fed day. You can eat whatever you want. The other day you do a fasting of around sixteen hours and eight hours. You can eat whatever you want. <coughs> 
in the intermittent fasting day you have a fasting window before 12 pm they say don't eat much till 12 you can have um, water you can have uh, clear liquids you can have maybe a small helping but on that day keep your uh, breakfast till lunch time low then you eat whatever you want call it a brunch lunch your dinner everything within 12 to 8 and after 8 again go on a fasting so by this you have fasted for 16 hours and fed for 8 hours <coughs> and that shows some really wonderful results <coughs> so again set realistic goals don't think i'm going to lose all my weight like this girl who's clearly it's it's clearly a photoshopped image and uh, clearly nobody's shirt can also lose weight so don't follow such unrealistic targets set um, a goal that you will lose around 10% of your weight in 6 months and the most important thing that you have to keep in attention is that you have to maintain it for 2 years a maintenance of 2 years of this weight loss itself will reverse everything from fibrosis to see a typhus in the liver really sorry yeah so and remember this i read in our pathology book and ever since then i've been very worried atherosclerosis begins at the age of 24 near age of 24 so how many years of borrow time are you on there is a village in japan called the village of longevity it's called the ogimi okinawa village so the people here <coughs> 3,000 people are above 100, <clears throat> 171 are above their 90, and there are a lot of people in that who are above 150, and they are able to exercise, to live a completely happy, healthy life, take care of their own needs and the needs of everybody else in their family, even at the age of 150. What are they doing? They're consuming a lot of green and yellow vegetables around three times. <coughs> higher than what we do they consume a lot of legumes they eat a plenty eat plenty of fruits eat lean meat not uh, high fat meat and do exercise regularly and eat only up to 80 percent of their stomach's capacity and they also have frequent fasting rituals so isn't this all what our ancestors also told us so why don't we convert our place into the village of longevity also so it's not only about uh, eating healthy, it's also about handling your food healthy to have a healthy nutrition totally. So you really have to clean, separate, chill and cook the food. Please don't resort to eating to, in such places. You can see um, how unhygienic the whole place is going to be and that you're going to land into a lo long term problems if you're going to resort to eating here. How about exercise? So exercise will help you maintain a healthy body weight. It will lower blood pressure. It will reduce the risk of heart disease. It will increase your muscle strength and function. It will give you perfect mental health, reduce cancers. In all, it reduces the ongoing inflammation in the body. And how do I exercise? So um, at least 30 minutes. This is the guidelines from American Heart Association for cardiovascular health. And at least 30 minutes a day of uh, for at least five days, uh, to a, uh, amounting to a total of 150 minutes per week. I'm sure we can spend this 30 minutes for five, uh, each day for five days for ourselves. And what do we do? We do a one-third of isotony, one-third of isometric, and one-third of aerobic exercises. What are your isotonic exercises? So you, the tone of the muscle is um, maintain the strain the same, whereas you uh, strengthen the muscle by <clears throat> working against the weight of your body or you can use some dumbbells. So these are isotonic exercises, lunges, <coughs> simple chest pads, push-ups, whatever you can do. You can do it for two minutes each exercise. Have around five different exercises. Do two minutes of each exercise and go on to your isometric exercises where isometric is the length of the muscle remains the same and you strengthen the muscle by increasing its tone. So you can either do a plank, wall sit, side plank, or glute bridge, whatever is amenable to you. Again, two minutes each exercise uh, per day. 
and aerobic exercises, which everybody thinks only aerobic exercises is an exercise, but your muscles don't get strengthened or they don't get toned and they don't push out the fat that is excess accumulated in them unless you strengthen them with your isotonic and isometric. So your aerobic will include cycling, you can do Zumba, jogging, swimming, and who knows, you might meet a beautiful girl like that when you go out cycling. So please, please go ahead and exercise. See, because it actually, more than 10% of weight loss can even regress such a harmful condition as liver fibrosis, which if left untreated will actually go on to cirrhosis. So 10% of weight loss with diet and exercise, and you're good to go. So a combination of both is highly essential. See, look at the snowball. He's been rolling down. He says that is complete exercise, but he's still putting on more weight. So don't eat as you roll down. No? Eat separate, eat less, and roll down also. So weight loss, weight loss, and weight loss is the order of the day for you to lose all the atherosclerotic or the fatty liver processes that are going on in your body. So rule of 100 to, if you want to live to be 100, will be 100 blood sugar, 100 cholesterol, 100 triglycerides, 100 blood pressure. If your stressed heart rate, your heart rate with exercise is less than 100, you maintain your weight, your waistline less than 100. You do 100 minutes of exercise and your body weight ideally should be your height minus 100. If you're able to do all this, you can live to be 100 years. So... Um, apart from diet and exercise, there are two other major factors which keep pushing us towards bad health, which is alcohol and smoking. So look at alcohol. It can cause a lot of memory loss, mood swings, dementia in the brain. People think only liver is affected by alcohol, but you really have to understand that it's a systemic process. Every organ in the body gets affected. So your heart, there's an irregular heart rate that you can have strokes and high blood pressure. Your muscular weakness can occur. You can have pancreatitis. You can have chronic gastritis. You can have cirrhosis and hepatitis with the liver. You can have breathing difficulties with, uh, because of alcohol also. And you can have <clears throat> viruses due to cirrhosis. So in the liver, it goes through a spectrum of fatty liver. Uh, alcoholic hepatitis, cirrhosis, and hepatocellular carcinoma. And it cannot, it does not limit itself to causing only liver cancer. It can also cause cancer in the larynx, pharynx, the esophagus, the breast, the liver, bowel, and whatnot. Why do you really have to uh, get addicted to it? So alcohol in moderation is what everybody advises. So nutritional defi deficiencies, infertility accidents, you can also have uh, a denial of health insurance. <coughs> Just looking up the most asked question on Google, it is actually what is the safe limit of alcohol? So remember, no level is safe. That is the perfect answer. No level is safe. Uh, and definitely no level is safe if you have seizures, fits, history of liver or pancreatic disease, a strong history of family cancer, peptic ulcer disease, uh, or if you are pregnant. A standard drink is equals 10 grams and one drink or less a day for women, two drinks or less a day for men is called drinking in moderation. And that has to be given in adequate intervals between the drinking periods also. But uh, caution, uh, there is a subtype of people who do develop alcoholic hepatitis in whatever quantity they do drink. So better and best is to avoid. So look at that one glass of alcohol and uh, you look at the quantity of alcohol he's having. This person is watching his alcohol uh, consumption. And I think with COVID time, uh, definitely the in the corona at home, whether we had it in our respiratory system or not, we had it in our fridge. So psychiatric problems and addiction is also a very, very um, uh, uh, important thing we are facing, especially after COVID uh, onset. We are seeing a lot of young people who have been <clears throat> getting a lot of psychiatric problems because of their alcohol intake. So please take help. 
it it's better to stop it as fast as you can so you can reverse alcohol if you recognize uh, uh, the damage caused by alcohol if you recognize that your problem early so look back and uh, take a uh, analysis to see whether you really are addicted or not so alcohol is a temporary fun with permanent consequences so be aware you can uh, the abcds of alcohol include accidents burn you can be a burden you can can lead to crimes or disease and death so say no to alcohol how about smoking smoking is is in uh, by in <clears throat> it by itself yes it does take our breath away and it has around 7000 chemicals which can all affect every part of your body look you are taking in paint you are taking in rocket fuel you are taking in soya gas you are taking in vinegar you are taking in lighter fluid everything batteries why would you want to put all that inside you and still think it's going to cause anything good to you apart from nicotine you are taking in all of this with smoking so yes it does cause heart attack strokes it causes lung cancer it causes fertility issues it causes your bones to get weak it can cause uh, even it can cause a um, stroke and it can cause a number of cancers by itself what are these e cigarettes so can i if i don't want to really um, get addicted to cigarettes can i change over to e cigarettes well fda does not approve it so there are different uh, e types of e cigarettes and the only thing is it does not have the 7000 chemicals that one cigarette has it has majorly nicotine but still uh, we are yet to see a long term study on the effect of e cigarettes on uh, people's health and it can, it is generally used by people to uh, for a de addiction from smoking but definitely it is not a healthy form of a cigarette as uh, everybody feels today so an important part of physical health is your sleep and your mental health are you mentally okay so then you will take the right physical choices of right choice of diet right choice of exercise right choice of saying no to drugs all this will come only if you have a uh, pristine mental mental health so look at this uh, we are no different from a tree so you fill the earth with pollution and the you fill the water that uh, goes to the tree with chemicals and it seems the trees rings actually become thinner and they become uh, they become narrower and closer to each other what do you think is going to happen to us if you fill your body with a lot of polluting agents like drugs and a lot of unhealthy diet so sleep more soundly sleep appears essential to improve and maintain energy levels give an adequate 8 hours sleep undisturbed sleep so sleep well and be well why do you need good sleep because you can you are um, uh, unknowingly you are progressing towards long term mood disorders you are prog progressing towards weight gain uh, sudden sleep disturbances rem sleep disturbances can actually hike your blood pressures diabetes you have infertility issues you can have heart disease you can have strokes all of this just because your sleep is disturbed so make sure you have a 7 hours of undisturbed sleep and just sleeping is it enough you carry a lot of stress uh, at the end of the day and you go to sleep is that enough no your dreams are going to be much more vivid, vivid and much more uh, terrorizing so i we suggest you empty your head of all the stress before you sleep those seven hours you are giving yourself your body your body is an important vehicle that takes you along in this life you can decide whether if you want it to be an ambassador or a lorry or you want it to be a mercedes this is in your hands so one of the important things get rid of all that stress that you have before you sleep why don't you do what is called a yoga nidra so a yoga nidra is something which will help you reset your body and it will give you everything that you need uh, it is a proprioceptive relaxation so you consciously you relax each body part and you will find a complete difference with one hour of yoga nidra you'll have four hours of rem sleep so which itself will refresh you for the next day so meditation all of this try uh, try listening to soothing music whenever you have time 
so all of this a healthy body and a healthy mind will make a healthy happy human so to talk about how to have a healthy mind uh, i invite dr vamsi over and uh, hopefully this uh, talk has been as uh, as um, instructive as it has been for me because i see a lot of things that i have to uh, change in myself so thank you thank you doctor yes sir thank you doctor Doctor, very well. In spite of your uh, bad I'm, cough, I'm and uh, you take uh, you request you to give voice rest for the whole day. And oh. a very nice and very informative talk. You said about uh, alcohol, alcoholics. That is Thirukkural. There is a chapter called Kallunnamai. Thirumandiram. There is a chapter called Kallunnamai. So the alcoholics, that is the drunkards. Every third person is a drunkard nowadays. Uh, he goes to a doctor uh, as soon as when you he sees a psychiatrist. so simultaneously he should go to a hepatologist or gastroenterologist not only psychiatrist psychiatrist alone won't help psychiatrist plus gastroenterologist then only the alcoholic effect that is cirrhosis fatty liver all due to alcohol so you can occasionally people can take drink of course they, that uh, nobody can prevent but for parties and even that you can avoid and uh, if you uh, that is i uh, want everybody to be a teetotaler after hearing this talk i think uh, some dr drunkards will become teetotalers so very nice talking very nice talk talk show by dr uh, mitra prasad i congratulate you and uh, so i request dr bamsi moti to take over and uh, give an innovative talk once again i thank immensely dr mitra prasad i request dr mitra prasad to keep take complete voice rest for the whole day thank you Hello everyone. Uh, happy Sunday. I'll take only a few minutes of your time. My name is Dr. Vamsi, and uh, and I'm a gastroenterologist from BGM Hospital. So as Dr. Mitra has spoken about uh, health, the main physical and mental part of the health. There all there is a the entire different spectrum of health, and all this is very important for a healthy human being. So what is mental health? Mental health is our emotional, psychological, and social social well-being. It is how we think, feel, and act. it helps determines uh, determine how we handle stress relate to others and make healthy choices just like a physical health it is very important to all people at any age group so always the health triangle should be a balanced triangle and either uh, if, uh, if there is any deviation then we will get we will be having a unbalanced health triangle so difference between positive and negative thinking is positive thinkers are winners they recognize their limitation and uh, focus on their strength always they have a, they have a part of the answer they always program and they always say let me do it for you so optimists and pessimists optimists are uh, uh, passionate pos positive and confident they are usually come they are uh, usually very happy and bold if we look at one incident both type of people have different conclusion imagine if you are holding a glass of water positive uh, a positive person will say the glass is half full while a negative person will say the glass is half empty the positive person might say the ha uh, half glass of water never spills but however a negative person can say that uh, uh, they will never spill so technically the glass is always full because it contains half of air and half uh, half of water so it is always full and always remember the glass is always refillable more examples especially in exams if students are having exams no few people might think like uh, i'm sure i can try to solve at least some of these questions while a negative person will think this is this math paper is looks like greek to me another example uh, two sons of an alcoholic father one struggles throughout uh, his life as a drunk the other becomes successful ambitious person and a businessman when asked why are you uh, the way you are both reply it, uh, my father is an alcoholic so it's all about taking a decision did you know by thinking one positive thought every morning you can psychologically trick your brain into being a happier person the power of positive thinking this is a very good book i request everyone to go through this so positive thinking does not necessarily mean avoiding or ignoring the bad aspects of life instead it involves making the most of the potentially bad situations trying to see the best happiness joy health and successful outcome of every situation 
So become a positive thinker. Focus on what is good about yourself, others, and the world around you. Rewire your brain to think positively. Psychology says force your mind to say, I can do this and you will do it. This is the difference between unsuccessful people and successful people. Uh, successful people feel like failures are stepping stones to success. There are two types of people, one who sits and cries, one who is energetic and finds a solution for everything. So this is the positive attitude. It's okay if uh, you don't like me. Not everyone has good taste, we can say, if someone doesn't like us. And for another case, in another case, there is as, as of now, there is political crisis in Pakistan, state of emergency in Sri Lanka, military rule in Myanmar, Taliban rule in Afghanistan, one party rule in China, one man rule in Russia. But our Indians know they're happily enjoying IPL. And few people still, they still, even after seeing all this, they feel that India is un, unsafe. Only God should help them. So this is what is positive thinking is. Like many people say Bill Gates has a private claim. Jeff Bezos has a private claim. All of us also have a private claim. If we see our, our cell phone, no, we have artificial intelligence claim, airplane mode, this is called AI airplane mode. When, the, when a million things can bring you down, find one reason to keep you up always. Don't say I cannot afford this. I'll, Always think how I can afford this. And always think out of the box. This doesn't mean game is over. You should think out of the box and always win. Few people might say, oil is too expensive. Why don't you change your pump instead of petrol pump, go to the hand pump, use the cycle for your daily routine activities. So always keep thinking positive. That helps us to be encouraged, happy, motivated, imaginative, and strong. Benefits of positive thinking is they have a sound mind gateway to success, full of achievements, full of opportunities. And positive thinking is always contagious. People around you uh, pick your mental moods and are uh, affected accordingly. Think about happiness, good health, and success, and you'll you will cause people to like you and deserve uh, and desire to help you. We are always what we think. When we focus on problems, we get more problems. When we focus on possibilities, we get more opportunities. Always choose what you focus in your life and you will grow. Detach from negative thoughts and look at the advantages of positive thinking. You can feel stronger, energetic, clarity of mind, positive mind, reduces, in, reduces stress, builds better relationship, better physical health, better social health, more success and create, creates healthy environment. There are many examples for positive thinking in real life. For examples, if uh, there would have not been any Starbucks, if Howard gave up uh, after he was uh, uh, denied by at least 240 times by uh, many banks, so never give up. This person is born to inspire. He was rejected by more than 1,000 times before his first chicken was sold. Now we can see KFC throughout the planet. This is the success story of KFC. It's never too late. Some people might say WhatsApp was started by someone who is 35 years, but always you can always also see uh, the founder of KFC who started KFC at the age of 62, and his uh, uh, stores are there throughout this earth. Whenever you feel sad, just remember that Coca-Cola only sold 25 bottles in the entire first year of their business, so never give up. First thing, second dream, third believe, and finally dare. If you can dream it, you can always do it. Dream, dream, dream. Dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result in proper action. So these are the richest people on earth today. If you see uh, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, he worked at McDonald's initially, in his initial stages of life. And the founder of Snap, Snapchat, was working for without any paid uh, payment at Red Bull, this factory. And if you see Elon Musk, he was selling video games at the age of 12 years. And if you see the founder of uh, Oracle, he, he worked as a program, uh, a computer programmer initially. And Michael Dell, who's the founder of Dell, was uh, washing dishes at a Chinese restaurant. All of them initially, though they were like that, they, they grew themselves and now they became very big with positive attitude. 
So all this cannot be done in single day. And uh, best example is the richest person on this planet now is Elon Musk. Once upon a time, he was ranking 634 and slowly over duration of 10 years, now he's number one. So be patient. Sometimes you have to see through, you have to get through the worst to get the best out of you. If you're not seeing re uh, results, feeling like giving up, consider this. The last thing to grow on the fruit, on the fruit tree is the fruit. So be patient and never give up. Great things take time. Fear has two meanings. Either you forget everything and run or face everything and rise. So don't worry, be happy. Never regret a day in your life because good days give happiness, bad days give experience, worst days give lessons and best days give memories. There should always be work balance. This is very important. And one should work smart and not hard. Social health. So this is another aspect of health. It refers to the ways in which people create healthy and positive interpersonal relationships with one another. Having good social health helps improve their emotional well-being and feel supported in their daily lives. So what is good social health? Work well as, be, as a member of a group, make and keep good friends, accept other people's ideas and suggestions. Increase your social activity and surround yourself with happy people and happiness is enhanced. This is a problem now. Earlier, people used to enjoy and play with kids. Now they're uh, enjoying with Wi-Fi and this has to be changed. It's always important to have good friends in our life. Uh, this is the statement uh, by Chennai Super Games uh, Captain MS Dhoni. He was telling that he has three dogs at home. Even after he loses a game or wins a game, all of them treat him the same way. And this is what means uh, mismanaged by good friends. So environmental health is also a very, very important aspect. It refers to the aspects of human health that are determined by physical, chemical, biological, social, and psychosocial factors in the environment. If we are harsh to environment, somehow it will come back to us. So what we want, uh, what I want to tell is all these chemicals, particles, stressors, infections, all this can be possible if uh, environment health is not good. How it impacts us is air pollution causes respiratory problems, uh, inadequate uh, water sanitation causes uh, GI problems, chemicals, radiation, all this can affect our health in a direct or an indirect way. So what you breathe is very important. What you drink is very important. What you, the food you eat is also very, very important. So if inadequate, uh, inadequate water or unhygienic water is there, we might get diarrhea, vector related disease, dengue, et cetera. Improper water resource management can lead to vector uh, related diseases. Overcrowding can cause respiratory problems. Exposure to industrial pollution can cause respiratory problems. Population movement and encroachment and construction can lead to vector-related uh, disease, diseases. Exposure to uh, toxic substances can result in poisoning. Natural uh, resource degradation can lead to mudslides and uh, an injury due to mudslide. Climate change, extreme hot and extreme cold weather, uh, cold weather also uh, directly and indirectly affect our health. Ozone depletion can cause skin cancer. So major comp uh, contributors of global uh, environmental health burdens of all ages include mainly respiratory, diarrheal, parasitic infections, and also cardiovascular. Yeah. Always be a part of the solution and not a part of the pollution. These are the footsteps of a bird. These are the footsteps of a, a dog. These are the footsteps of a horse. And these are the footsteps of idiots who keep throwing waste wherever they're moving. So benefits of environmental health, this is very much important uh, for cleaner air quality, cleaner water, and reduces hazardous waste. Spiritual health is also important, includes a purposeful life and actualization of different dimensions and capacities of human beings. Spiritual health creates balance between physical, psychological, and social aspects of the human life. When a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away uh, the ticket and jump jump up. You sit uh, trusting the engine, uh, engineer like the, in the same way, trust God today, no matter how dark your situation is. Always be happy, always wear a smile, not because life is full of reasons to smile, but also because of your smile itself can be a reason for others to smile. So thank you so much. <laughs>
And a special thanks to Palakkad Tamil Cultural Research uh, Center and Vijam Foundation for making all this happen today. Yeah. Thanks to Professor Rajaram sir for your consistent efforts for making all this happen today. And uh, I am really grateful to you for making Palakkad Cultural Center more healthy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You made the entire session so lively. Thank you. <laughs>